anyway, this is um, my book. I wrote a book, um, well, I was saying, I've been living in Italy for 22 years, but I've been working with Italy for like 30 years. And what happened was, this is called Birth by the Tuscan Sun, and I'm sure you've all heard of Under the Tuscan Sun. It was even made a movie with Diane Lane, and the woman from Cortona, her name is Frances Mays, she's uber rich and all kinds of beautiful things, and most of us who are expats and live in Italy, <laughs> although she's a nice woman, I met her, but you know, we just think, we are so sick and tired of these stories about like, eat, pray, love. Yeah, eat. Under the Tuscan Sun was made by, written by Francis Mays. So I called myself Francesca Maggi. <laughs> it's a joke that only I get in, of life in Italy from the actual, because the Italians love, love, love to say that, that they have the best quality of life. And they do, for especially compared to America, they do. But I feel in my heart that the quality of life is not waiting four months for your Sky Television hookup. <laughs> quality of life for me is walking into a post office, or never walking into a post office. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Yeah. You know, I mean, this guy in Torino, a colleague of my brother from Fiat, I'm from Detroit, so Fiat Detroit. Uh, he said, okay, here's the deal. I have never, I'm 36 years old. I have never in my life put, been into a post office in my life. And since I came to Italy, I have now been there six times in six weeks. <laughs> so, you know, so to me, that's quality of life. Two hours at the post office, you know. So I said, okay, let's talk about quality of life then, right? So I call it sanità or insanity. <laughs> and here's a... Little cartoon from this lovely cartoonist who I'm friends with now, but we met in, in the internet. Amazing guy. And he says, she's about to jump in the water. And the Italians have a lot, they don't care about med medicine and science, even though they're incredible researchers. They care about what grandma says, right? <laughs> so here she's about to jump in the pool and she says, don't get, don't get your hair wet, you'll catch yourself. Just don't get your hair wet, because you'll catch your death, a little set proverb or say. And like for the, the another section is called the customer is never right, mm -hmm. <laughs> which also talks about customer service. The buyer needs a hundred eyes, the seller but one. That's an Italian proverb. You know, so it's about the customer getting ripped off and not getting well treated and so on like that. So they're just little funny stories that I came up with. I'll do the prologue for you. The why I wrote the book. What, what came up is in a monologue show, so I may not read, I might just perform it. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have long held that you can tell a lot about a culture simply by looking at its milk containers. Think about it. In the United States, each household gets a one gallon, that's nearly four liters, four liter, com completely plastic, non-biodegradable jug, but with an incorporated handle for easy pouring, designed for mass consumption and maximum user friendliness. Satisfaction, guaranteed. Consume the whole jug and then wantonly pollute the environment. That's America. In the United Kingdom, the milkman, yes, he still exists, although he's called, I'm sure, something much more far PC by now, that's politically correct. Home delivers heavy glass jars, filled white to the rim, but carefully indentured for easy gripping. Impeccable service with the quaintness of Mother Goose. Forming is transformed into a test of skills. First, it starts at the grocery store, where you load up your cart with minuscule cartons serving about a glass and a half each. At the checkout, you stand there transfixed while the cashier stands in dozens and dozens of little boxes. The minimum purchase required just to satisfy your morning cappuccino and cereal fix for the week. Once home, you place the carton on the counter. 
Start searching the entire household for those darn kitchen scissors. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Prize the side fold from the carton. Talk about childproofing. Praying to the household gods that you do not break a nail. Next, you snip off a bit of that triangular wedge, which then it catapults up over your head, landing some three feet away, inevitably behind a countertop, and you will most likely find the artifact in 2043. <laughs> you go to pour. Your grip, no matter how daintily placed, causes the milk to jet stream out like a baby boy on a changing table. By this time, your coffee's growing cold, so you ignore the puddle and call in the cat. <coughs> and with practice, and not without some finesse, you actually learn to pour quickly enough so that what's left inside the box doesn't go running down the side and onto the floor as well. Milk cartons, the single spout solution to understanding Italian culture. Low customer satisfaction, obtuse organization, and no recourse for the weary. And this is the essence of living in a country as dazzling as it is disorganized, as much of a promoter of quality of life as a deaf defier of it, whose products are as superior in their inimitable style and excellence as its everyday services are abysmal. This is life in Italy. You have to stay. You